Cool Contraption Guy with Tom Fox, Workshop Editor for Boys Quest and Fun for Kids Magazines, presents... In the last video, I showed how to make a popsicle stick switch. In this video, I show how to use this switch to turn a light bulb on and off. Notice I make use of alligator clips, which are really neat when you want to make a quick electrical connection. In order for electricity to flow through something, you have to make a complete electric circuit. For instance, to light a light bulb, you have to connect one end of the bulb's filament to one terminal of a battery and the other end of the filament to the battery's other terminal. Now I will show how I will light the light bulb. I have soldered wires with alligator clips at their ends to the terminals of this light bulb, which are connected internally to the bulb's filament. Now when I connect the alligator clips to the battery, the bulb lights up because there now is a connection directly from the battery to the bulb's filaments. In other words, there is a complete electric circuit which includes the light bulb. If I only connected one wire from the battery to the bulb, nothing happens because a complete circuit is not made. Now if I want to make the complete circuit, there we go, the lights. Now let's connect the popsicle stick switch in series with the battery and light bulb. We do this by first connecting one of the filament through the alligator clip to the terminal of the battery, the other one to one connection, the bottom connection of the popsicle stick switch. Now the top connection screw we connect to the battery and nothing happens. Why not? Do we have a complete circuit? Well it comes from goes from here, through here, through here, through here, through here, then there's a there's nothing here. Because there's airspace. Electricity can't flow through air. Now we press this. What do you think will happen? Well the light bulb lights. There's a complete circuit then. By the way, this type of switch is known as the normally open momentary contact switch. While this seems a real simple, useless circuit, actually it has quite use. A lot of mechanics and even electricians use such a circuit to discover, first off, if a fuse, if you have a bad fuse, continuity, if you have a bad motor, the wires are burned out, if you have a, a bad solenoid, or some wiring in, in a, you can't figure out why uh, something doesn't light in a house. Well, wires, you find out maybe a uh, mouse ate wires and you could find a problem there. So it does have use. A switch in an electrical circuit and a valve and a water pipe have a lot in common. Both control flow. The valve controls the flow of water and the switch the flow of electricity. But what is electricity? In the introduction to this series, I mentioned electricity is mysterious. That is true, but we do know something about it. For instance, we know electricity in a wire is caused by charged particles so small that they are invisible even with the most powerful electric microscope in existence. These particles are called electrons. And they flow through a wire, somewhat like the water molecules that flow through a water pipe. What will probably surprise you is that water flows through a pipe faster than electrons flow through a wire. This may be hard to believe since it seems that light appears the instant you turn on a light switch, which it does. Obviously, there must be more to electricity than simply moving electrons, and there is. It is electric pressure, which is something like water pressure, only it deals with electricity. Like water pressure, which pushes the water molecules through the pipe, electrical pressure pushes the electrons through the wire. This electric pressure travels at the speed of light and its intensity is measured in volts. This electric pressure is usually called the electromotive force or EMF 
and is part of the mystery of electricity.